Mob of 200 storms mosque in Indian village and thrashes worshippers inside. On October 12th, hundreds of Hindus forced their way into a mosque in a village outside of Delhi, where Muslims were offering the night, nightly prayers. According to a retired army officer, uh, Subedar Nazar Muhammad, who registered the complaint, the trouble began earlier in the day when about 200 people surrounded the mosque and threatened to expel the Muslims from the village. Later in the evening, the mob returned and assaulted people, including women, elders, and the imam, and ransacked the mosques. Uh, witnesses said that the Hindus locked the door while threatening them, and some had guns. The mob had fled by the time the police arrived. The night after the attack, village elders apologized to the Muslims, and the Muslims decided to let the matter drop and put the compromise in writing for the police department. The fight was allegedly started because of ongoing renovations at the mosque prompted rumors that the mosque was illegally expanding. So I want to give some context to what happened here. So this happened in a village outside of Delhi called Gurugram. And people might, might remember that we've talked about Gurugram to some extent because in Gurugram, there was a huge controversy over Muslims praying in public, offering the Muslim in public. Do you remember this, Armin? And mm. there would be one, it turned into this whole legal thing. The, oh, yeah. the city started to revoke the permission for Muslims to do this, even though it had previously been allowed. And in the areas where the Muslims were offering namaz in public, um, they were, um, it was, it was actually becoming a dangerous situation because right-wing, very intense, extreme right-wing Hindus would come to these areas, start raising hate speeches, start, you know, protesting. And I mean, it, it just became the perfect setup for violence, right? Um, and part of what was happening in Guru Gram was that the Muslims were praying in public because their, according to everything I've read in my understanding, is that there isn't enough space for them actually in the mosques that are available in this village. And so they essentially had no choice but, but to do it in public because there literally isn't enough space. And so there was even a Sikh temple uh, um, what's the word for it? Uh, Gujwara that actually offered to open up areas of the Gujwara to let Muslims pray inside their space to get them off the streets, basically. And some people praised them for, but actually there was a huge backlash to this Gujwara opening up their space so you, they don't have to do it on the street in response to the public outrage over people doing this in public, right? So this is happening in the same area that has been dealing with this huge controversy that started in 2021. And so there was this mosque that was having renovations. And ever since they started doing renovations on the mosque, it raised tensions in the areas because then people started spreading rumors that the mosque is actually expanding and they're doing so legally, even though the mosque, my understanding is, is actually on private property. So because there were these allegations against them, that that is what prompted people to storm this mosque, destroy many areas of it based on the footage that I found, and just assault people straight up in the mosque. Um, because, you know, I some sort of fear over Islamic expansion or something, which is like, okay, if you don't want them praying in the street, which personally I would, I in general don't like to see that kind of thing in public life. So I understand the impulse. However, I think it's extremely hypocritical because ritual practice is everywhere in Indian public life, if we're being honest. Anyways, it's like, okay, so you don't want them to do it in public. So even if they, okay, even if it, the rumor was true that they were expanding, is that not the solution to your problem theoretically? But it's not really about actually fixing that problem, right? It's about putting them in their place. I don't know. 
What what what? Yeah, so ba so basically, you're like, oh, why are you praying in the streets? Or like, okay, let's build them a place so that they could not pray in the streets. Like, oh no, you're expanding. I like, okay, so what do you what do you want? Like, if this the solution for them not to be praying in the streets is to build them a place to for them to pray. But I I guys, correct me in the live chat. What do you think? I think that they don't need to be consistent or care about anything because all they need is they want to find a way to storm a mosque and basically attack muslim worshipers because that's they're just waiting for an excuse they're like oh mosque illegal say no more i'm here with my pitchfork like just tell me anything islam illegal muslim illegal um mosque illegal or something i just like Oh, the government is not going to do its job, so the government, so we have to take the laws in our own hand. Like they just like, I think they dream about days like this where they could go and attack a mosque, and they're just waiting for anything in the news to basically use as a rallying cry to get their fellow Hindu people to go and do this like they're just like looking for, they're just like looking at the headlines and the news just like give us please 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 give me an excuse so i could go do this am i being too pessimistic saying that shreya she agrees with me saying yes yeah no other people in the live chat who are even ex indian ex-muslims agree that it's about putting people in their place essentially and people are telling me that oh guru gram isn't actually a village blah 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 it's quite big Frankly, I'm not that familiar with, you know, different sizes of places in India, but in the, I was just going with how it was described in all the media that I read. Um, it's kind of a term that's used quite diffusely in a lot of media that I've read. So my apologies if I inaccurately categorize that. But, um, oh, there's a comment that you should read by Numan. Okay, Numan is saying, why, Armin, why don't they just pray in their own house? Well, because religion, the utility it has for religious people is not actually it questions to answers to questions about uh, life and universe and stuff. The main point of religion, the, the need that is satisfying is the rituals that is done with other people, right? Like for some reason, our brains are wired to desire stuff like that right it basically builds tribes and tribes is how humans manage to survive and exactly. rituals uh, public group rituals is how we signal to each other that we belong to a tribe and we don't so our brains like a lot of us atheists don't feel that because our brains because we're like kind of like the mutation in the meme okay so we might a lot of us might not get what the hell is about this that people desire but apparently most humans have a need for that have a need uh, for rituals that is done in groups so and that's i actually what completely is. understand that i just do it in, in different ways like people could yeah. say that us doing the news every week is yeah. the atheist republic ritual or you could go sports it's where we sports. get together we talk about things that are important to us we share our community we share our ideas it's the time that we spend together yeah or sports like or music mm -hmm. festivals stuff like that but so that point of like the, as much as people say, oh, Islam is bad, like going to heaven and being in love with, the, uh, you know, being horny for Allah or like <laughs> Hindu. Well, people, <laughs> I'm sure people really say that. What? <laughs> or people saying Hinduism is about like getting in touch, you know, being, do, you know, doing, being in touch with your car, Dharma or whatever. Um, it's not really about that. It's about, being part of a community and doing things that makes you recognize that you're part of that community right so that's why you wouldn't muslims wouldn't just pray at their home they need to do their friday prayers or whatever public prayers they want to do that's their that's the whole point that's the whole point of religion i mean not the whole point but a major part of religion yeah oh and um, i also <laughs> pronounced his name correctly you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> d is saying oh no we're in a cult <laughs> This is actually funny because as I really love to study cult psychology and one writer and researcher about this, his name is Dr. Stephen Hassan, and he actually is a, a, a cult survivor. 
And he talks about like cult is a word that has a very negative connotation. Um, and it's basically our short term way of saying a destructive high control group, right? But technically, any form of consistent congregation or group could be categorized as a cult. So what he talks about as being more constructive is looking at the beliefs and practices of the groups. And if the group's behavior and beliefs and ideology is constructive to human creativity and self-expression, or if it is destructive to it. So, um, and there's many different ways in which a group can be destructive. It, it comes in the form of behavioral control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. And um, if groups actually promote critical thinking, if they promote criticism of leadership, if they um, promote creativity of its members, and if the group members do not face consequences and ostracization, if they freely decide to leave the group, then that is the mark of a constructive group. So those are things I actively think about when I'm leading Atheist Republic, because I want to make sure that we are actually a space that is very constructive to a, a, a person's felt. Wait, creativity. so we can't hunt down the people who unsubscribe? <laughs> No, and that's actually one of the reasons why I hate when you say that. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Uh, wait, people are, some people were, uh, Norman and Ian were shocked that women are in mosques. What, what are you talking, guys? Women, most, I mean, every single mosque that I've ever seen has a woman section and it has a men's section and a woman's section. Why are you guys are shocked about women being in mosques? Mm -hmm. Um, Okay, I already read that. Do you start this one? Um, oh, yeah. D is saying, this is important, that there are just a handful of Muslim er families in the areas. Reports say that they are regularly harassed. That's true. There are some reports that say that there are only four to six Muslim families in the area. But I was reading more, and it turns out that those families are actually quite large in the extended area. So... Um, I mean, that doesn't justify anything, but it was larger than, oh, just saying that there are only four families initially led me to believe. Um, uh, oh, Shriyash is saying the weekly air shows are actually my rituals. Seriously. I mean, same. <laughs> um, Sat Satya is saying, is there actually a primary source which confirms the attackers were Hindutva? They could have just been Hindus. I didn't actually say that they were Hindutva. I simply said Hindus. I don't remember saying that they I think were Hindutva. I said that. I just, I, I'm just, me saying Hindutva is just my version of saying Hindus were like a little bit more aggressive. I know that's not right. I should say Twinnies, maybe. Harris yeah. came up with the Twinnies. Yeah, they were Twinnies. Okay. Twinnies, I'm uncomfortable that, saying that word as a white person <laughs> we're okay we're just saying it so that we don't say not all hindus guys yeah, you guys come enough. up with the yeah twinnies right what's wrong with saying twinnies i feel okay this is me and my cultural context i feel like me saying that as an american white person comes across as racialized slur so <laughs> but it's like, not i would racialized. rather not say that because that I feel like it would be gross to hear me say that about it. I don't know. I don't like it. A lot of people are saying that about Twinnies, like criticizing Harris, like this sounds bigoted. I would like, but it's not. It's really, literally, he just came up with a term so that he's not bigoted. So he's not saying all Hindus. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And Satya okay. is saying, damn, Susanna, such honesty is not expected of a leftist. Okay. Satya, I would like you to put some respect on my name. I am not a leftist, okay? <laughs> I am so hey, I am left. triggered by being identified as a... I am on the left, okay? I'm on the left. I am that not a leftist. leftist. That it term leftist. carries a lot of emotional baggage for me. <laughs> I'm not a freaking commie, okay? I'm not a like socialist, she... okay? I'm a lib. I'm just a flaming lib. Lib, flaming lib. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. When I see the leftist, I think of these, you know, constantly like tanky, freaking won't stop talking about anti imperialism to the extent that it loses all meaning, oh, yeah. like coping for like 
authoritarianism like that's when i think when i hear leftist at, at this Wait. point in my life because <laughs> i'm so frustrated so don't you, you dare call me that <laughs> you sent me a meme about this can i share that <laughs> rivka sent this to me when i was oh, venting rivka to her about my frustrations <laughs> it was so good all right so for people who don't have visuals uh, it says trolley problem but for leftists a hellfire missile can take out the trolley but that would be imperialism. <laughs> this, this meme is everything. I love it. I'm going to use it so many times. I know. It's so funny. Satya is saying, is progressive the right word? No, that word carries a lot of baggage for me, too, after living almost liberal, 10 years in the liberal, San Francisco liberal. Bay Area. Just call me a yeah. liberal, okay? Liberal. I just want to be a lib. <laughs> <laughs> Charles is saying, in Europe, you're leftist by European standards. Okay, I know that this is very culturally dependent. Like, if I say I'm on the left in India, people are going to think I'm a full-blown communist, okay? So you have to be careful about what you say, what you mean, okay? Yeah. okay I just, okay, Lib, thank you. <laughs> thank you, okay? I just, I am a big lover. I'm a big lover of individual liberty, Okay. That's my thing. That's my anchor okay. point. Okay. 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 <laughs> All right. Can we let's move on? Can we clap this for the a oh, talk spot for me recently? I didn't used to care so much about this, but it's been pissing me off recently. <laughs> I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> we all can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.